Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Matt, and thank you so much for watching. Today is a much needed upgrade and replacement part for the BRZ. It's going to be kind of a lot of time and labor, um, and probably some learning for me. But uh, the car, as I, as some of you might know from the, the last video, it has a few issues. The most important issue that I need to sort out right away is the wheel studs. It still has factory length and just factory in general OEM wheel studs on the car. And they just don't, they don't stick out enough for the wheel and tire combo and the spacers. So what I'm going to do is change to some aftermarket wheel studs. I have these ARP extended studs that should be good enough to run even up to like 10 to 15 millimeter spacers on the car. Um, I don't think I'm going to run that big of spacers anyway. But frankly, a little extra length is never a bad thing. <laughs> I accidentally happened into kind of a perverted joke, and I apologize for that. But uh, a, a little extra something something on the ARP studs is never a bad idea, um, especially for a car that's going to see a lot of abuse, a lot of drifting, track work, stuff like that, um, and a lot of dismounting and mounting tires. So I want some really strong wheel studs, and that's what I'm going to install today. So I have all the parts I need right here. So we have four sets of ARP extended wheel studs and one wheel stud installer tool that I bought, interestingly enough, from Lyle uh, in Clarinda, Iowa. Thanks, guys. I appreciate your help uh, getting me this part because it was significantly cheaper than any of the local auto parts stores. I will show you how to use this as we go forward in the video, and uh, by the end, we should have some nice wheel studs and a car that's actually like safe to drive. <laughs> Now, just before we get started, I do want to slightly preface the fact that um, I am not a professional mechanic by any means. Uh, I, I kind of know what I'm doing when it comes to some of this stuff, but I'm not perfect. If you want to see like a really, really good video on how this works, check out Kevin Vo, his video. He made one not that long ago with a BRZ, and I'm actually going to use it as a direct uh, kind of like tool to understand how to do this myself. That being said, let's get the car in here on jack stands and let's get started on what's probably going to be a little bit of a long job. Okay, now that I kind of know how to do it, I started with the right side and it was awful. Um, but first off, quick little thing, you have to take one 10 millimeter out and one 12 millimeter out, and then you can take the wheel speed sensor off. Do that. Wheel speed sensor. Just throw that back here. And then this will come off once I take the brakes. There we go. Okay. Now you're ready to take the brake caliper off with two 14 millimeters on top and bottom, right here and then one on bottom. So we ran into a pretty massive problem with this car uh, doing the job. The way it worked on Kevin Vo's channel was a lot better because I think his car must have been newer with maybe less corrosion and stuff like that. We figured out, by the way, we is me and Draven, my neighbor, um, good Miata guy. He's got like a badass stanced crazy car. Uh, anyway, so this whole hub, once we undid these four bolts here, here, and in the back, um, it was supposed to just pull out and it did not even close, like come close to pulling out. Um, it's super, like there's just tons of corrosion in there. I don't know. It doesn't show very well, but uh, it just stayed like welded almost to the hub. Um, what we figured out to do was take a screwdriver and just whack on it a lot to try to wedge it in there. And then once we finally got enough room, we uh, um, used a, cr a crowbar here to just kind of crow it out or whatever, pry it out. Um, then we also, in the middle of that, used a little bit of a slide hammer and that I think did more than we thought originally because uh, at first it just pulled the whole hub assembly out and that didn't help, but I think it also helped break up some of that corrosion that was stuck behind there. Well, we just had to get it pulled out barely enough to get these extended th studs through. I managed to get one. The rest of them might be a little bit of a pain, but we're going to get it figured out and get it taken care of. So now that we created enough distance to get them in, we're just going to basically use the uh, impact to pull them through. With It's honestly so satisfying seeing it pull them in like that. Okay. 
just want to take a second to explain where we are in the project or where I am in the project now. Um, it's the very next day. It, it, it was a lot longer to do the rears than I expected yesterday. Um, as these things tend to be, you know, pro car projects, you know, 20 minute jobs, two hours, two hour jobs, eight hours, whatever. I don't know. It's just crazy. But um, ended up getting the rears done. It was a big, big old son of a B word to do. And I'll explain that kind of right now. <clears throat> Okay, so as you can see, these are all my new ARP wheel studs. They're all in place. Um, I, I showed you guys that uh, footage of pulling those through, but this is the e-brake setup on the car. It's a drum setup. And uh, essentially what happened um, is th this whole hub right here has to pull out a little bit to get more space behind this face in order to, to get one of these through because they're a lot longer. Um, so you need to pull this hub out just slightly only about that far um, and you can see these four or these two bolts and there's two on the other side um, you have to take those out and then in theory this should just pull out but mine was it had a lot of corrosion behind it and so it was just made it and stuck to this bat the back of this surface um, we had to use a series of hammering uh, straight slot screwdrivers and pry bars behind this face right here in order to pull it out far enough to get them in it did eventually work uh the back right side <laughs> took way longer because it it was a trial and error kind of thing of us learning but um this side only took us about an hour and a half after we learned the other side uh normally speaking this should only take you like 30 45 minutes to do the whole thing because um it just shouldn't be corroded like that on newer cars especially you wouldn't have any trouble um but as it is this is an eight-year-old car now and it's lived its life in the midwest so that's that's just the way it is um it helped us a lot by taking the e-brake assembly completely apart with the e-brake assembly out of the way we we were able to, to to get better access to to get to wedge stuff down behind that face and help pull the hub out slightly um, we used WD-40. I wish I'd had some better penetrating oil, but honestly, really thankful that my uh, neighbor, Draven, decided to come down and help at the time he did. Um, he brought some WD-40 and just some extra mind power to bounce ideas off of, and um, having an extra set of hands really helped too, so that, that was nice. Uh, the rear is done. I just have to button everything up, put the brakes back together, and we're good to go with the rears. The fronts are supposed to be a lot easier, and I will explain why once I get to that point. Um, but for now, I'm just going to button up the rear, get get the wheels back on lower the car and then raise the front so we'll do that right now i finished the right front of the car passenger front and we're going to move on over here now that i know how to do it we'll uh film and go through how to do the fronts it's way easier than the backs like the back took me five hours total and this is probably going to take two hours even including filming and kind of just messing around and not really being that uh um, speedy. So yeah, let's move it, get moving on the fronts. I'm going to take off the wheel and then the brakes and it's super simple after that. I also want to mention that I'm switching from these open-ended shorty lug nuts to a set of nice, uh, QQ Gen, like I think they're heptagonal. I think that's seven. Yeah. Heptagonal would be seven sided. Um, I think they look really good and I had them laying around from, uh, the STI before the STI got extended wheel studs. So these should work really good on the car and look a lot better. Five millimeter spacer. Now we're gonna work on the brakes. The AP Racing Big Brake Kit uh, replaces the factory 17 inch bolt that holds the brake caliper on with uh, an Allen key. This is a big, I think it was a 10 millimeter it says, a 10 millimeter Allen key. Um, so yeah, we're gonna use that to take off the brake caliper and then let the brake caliper sit while we essentially pound out the new or the old wheel studs and put in new ones. It's way easier than the back. With the brake caliper out of the way, we're just going to start hammering these out. You can really tell this was like a Midwestern or Iowa car or whatever, because all this is just corroded. That's why the back gave me so many issues. I can't believe how terrible the back was, but the front's so much easier. I love rear wheel drive cars. They're just so much simpler. Yeah. 
Okay, after two days and probably about seven hours of labor, we have uh, brand new extended wheel studs in the front and rear. Like I said, the rear was significantly harder than the front, so just know that um, for the future. Some cars, like newer ones, you won't have any issues getting the hub apart, but uh, this car is a 2014. It's lived its life in the Midwest where we have rust and all that. And, you know, it is what it is. Okay, guys, thank you for watching. Wow, I feel like I'm just super dirty right now. But hmm. anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope this helped. It's not really a very, I guess, like hard thing to do. It's just really time consuming, um, especially if you have an older car like this one. So uh, that being said, I managed to do it and I am far from a professional mechanic. So I'm sure you guys can get her done. Uh, thanks again to my neighbor, Draven, for all the help yesterday with the rears. Uh, and thanks to Penguin Garage for supplying the parts. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out and stay shifty.